Yaga. Peterson on the beat. Peterson Zagate. One leg in the water, another one at the fire. Masiku wano we live life ya mapanga. Okay, for someone who's watching me for the first time and you're seeing this face for the first time, I would say this is the face of Peter Senzagaze. I'm a Zambian musician and I love music and politics. So I'm a musician who does politics or a politician who sings. Probably I've loved music since I was a young person and I was a very good at dancing rumba. And uh, I used to be a rumba follower up to until 2001 when I started uh, having the interest to start singing. And I think from 2001, uh, I've been a musician. In fact, I started to sing for myself because I saw... Uh, I, I saw myself writing songs for other people. I think I got into music because I wanted to find something that could make me money to go into school. So I think everything started because I wanted to be in school. I was doing accounting, so I wanted to pay for my school. And I wanted to do something that could pay for my school. And I got into music and I think it blew bigger than I thought. And today, I would say I've been in this professionally for 16 years now. I grew up from a family of politics. My mom was a staunch UNIP and I saw Patrick Aria and uh, political party cars parking at our place and I saw a lot of people meeting from our home, cooking from our home and uh, before they go into the field to do their politics. So I think from a tender age I've always seen politics as part of my life because of my mother. Lifetime opportunity. If my phone rang right now, it would be probably giving service to my country, uh, having a, maybe finding a way of making the music bigger, being given a, an opportunity to make decisions on how to promote arts in the nation, and just how to advertise Zambia to the outside world. Uh, I think for the first time, uh, in the longest period of time when the internet came, we thought we are going to start losing revenue. We're thinking now we're not, gonna, we're not going to be making sales because now people want music for free. But I, in the past few days, I've just realized how much uh, positive the internet is gonna make us a lot of money uh, we're now talking about uh, YouTube views we're not talking about uh, online stores that sell our music maybe per single or per album uh, for the first time we are able to sell a song and like waiting for you to do a lot of songs and compile them make put them on a CD and then start selling them as a collection of uh, work but now even a song is able to be sold and then uh, also when it comes to promotion back in the days you need to walk around with the cds and back in the back uh, in your back pocket or in your backpack trying to go to radio stations to ask for uh, radio presenters or radio djs to play your music uh, probably just go out there to ask for airplay right now you can have airplay on your own uh, account whether instagram facebook twitter uh, whatever it is and it's easy for promotion as well nowadays people are sharing links in a shortest period of time a song that you are releasing right now can reach the whole uh, parts of zambia at once or just across the world even people in uh, europe and america can access your music just as you release it right there so i think the internet has been a very big positive right now uh, maybe uh, nine months ago or 12 months ago i could have been saying uh, reasoning differently but i think uh, now i've seen the the positiveness of it um, the music industry for me to i think it is the 
if there's anything that I would really want to change or have a say about is uh, the human resource for when they are employing radio presenters or radio DJs or people that actually play the music on radio. I think uh, it would be nice to balance up age because you realize that uh, right now there's more music for young people playing because a lot of radio presenters are younger and you find that music like for Moses Sakala, Andrew Nurenda, Mayenge and all these legends that have always been making music ever since we were young is not playing anymore because the guys on radio can't relate with that music and they're quite too young for the music so we always have um, good songs not playing sometimes you hear a very good song and you think this is gonna be a very hot song before you realize it it's nowhere frustrating a lot of artists and uh, music that's just a uh, hyper uh, for the time being or that is really appealing to the young guy who wants to jump up and chant is what is making it to airplay so you hear the countdown is more of a uh, hyper music and uh, youthful sounds uh, as compared to catering for every age. I think a lot of uh, people in Zambia love music, the old and the young, the laid back and the reserved, the outgoing and the outspoken. So I think when it, came to, when it comes to employing radio presenters or radio DJs or actually the people that play music on radio, I think that is maybe a policy that I would want to create to see that all radio uh, stations or media houses look into it uh, unless it's a youth radio um, just going direct to say I'm not happy wouldn't be fair just going straight to say I'm very happy I'm happy again wouldn't be fair what I would really want to say is that every government for over the years i am privileged to have been a musician a musician under four presidents i was a musician at my highest peak as well in uh, during um, president manawasa i was a musician at my highest peak uh, during rupia banda i was a musician during sata's government and i'm still a musician right here with this caliban and um, status under this new president and i've seen things dynamic and uh, uh, change. Uh, if I was to compare all the government, I think the government that I would have a lot of negatives to say was this one. Uh, I've had negatives to say about previous governments. I have had praises to say about previous government, but um, when it comes to this one, I think I have more negatives to say than the positive. Yes, I do have positives that I can say, but I think the weight is really on the negative side. So. I'm partially not as happy as I would be with this current government. Um, the good things that I've seen is the free market where people are able to trade. Uh, uh, everyone now, all you have to do is think of any business that you want to run and then register the business start running around doing putting your papers in 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 in, in order and own a business and you can be called a businessman a lot of people are re registering companies like entrepreneurship is now free uh, you can think of anything you want to do register it start chasing after it and you'll be called a businessman and you can even feed families and be what you are i think the liberation of our economy is one of the positive things that I can say about what we are enjoying in Zambia right now or compared to what we were back then where you have to buy everything from Niek or from one shop the government had to own everything and everyone doesn't have to make money everyone has to feed from the government so I think uh, that's one of the positives <laughs> I think for the first time I'm seeing, with this one, for the first time I'm, I'm, I'm seeing repeatedly, almost every year, for the past seven years, I'm seeing a person die on the street because he's been shot. Or, and the reason is just because it belongs to the opposition. It's something that I never saw over the years. Uh, maybe even when I was younger. Uh, Maybe if you hear somebody shot in the night at home and went to shoot, but now it's happening daylight, everyone is there and 
bullets are flying at 12 hours that's one very big guy like we are losing life because we just need to play democracy so i think it is very disturbing because when you, a nation decides that you are going to be a democracy you've decided that we are going to disagree democracy is about having the other person believe in something else and the other one believing in something else and the moment you choose democracy you've decided that me and my mother are not going to speak the same language me and my uncle or my young brother or my elder sister we're not going to speak the language you have preferences that i would not want to go for because we want the betterment of this country but we disagree on how to do it but when we reach a level of forgetting the essence of democracy and thinking we are enemies just because we are branded differently i think we are losing it maybe we need to go back to understand why we are a democracy and what we want out of this but for now i think we are thinking we are enemies with each other you see young people fighting each other because of the, the t-shirt the, the color of the t-shirt they are wearing or because of the brand they are so these are certain things that have, 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 have were not as bad as visible back then as now and then it is currently where you are seeing a lot of tribalism why you feel uh, certain political parties should belong to certain tribes and certain tribes should belong to certain political parties which is not wasn't what zambia was 15 years ago uh, we had parties like MMD that were stronger in Western province uh, as strongholds, Kalavo, Kaoma, and all those areas. But now it's becoming very different and quite very saddening. So there's a lot of bad things that have been accepted or let to happen when they should have been stopped. Uh, for the first time, people that break the law can be left because they are just branded cadres. So today you can go and assault someone wearing a political party t-shirt and you'll be understood that you did it on political grounds. But beating someone is wrong whether you are aware you, you, it's political or he's insulted you or he slept with your spouse you cannot take the law in your hands but now we're seeing a lot of things happening that even people used to call wakaponya of gavenga wapa station of wakutani they're now becoming they are, you would see them even on main news television talking about what they can do to the other person which is practically i'll come to assault you or cause harm to your body and because at that moment when i'm saying it i'm wearing a political party color then it is becoming acceptable that yeah or have a opposition or these are a ruling but i think those are bad things that are happening right now that need to be changed yeah like i said in the first place that democracy is about division it's about people dividing themselves agreeing to say us who belong to different ideologies that's democracy uh, especially when we say multi-party democracy so because we are, we are going to have such situation it means that when these people are divided and have got certain areas where they belong or certain ideologies or certain brands it means that everyone will protect their brand and make their brand look better so in this scenario you find propaganda comes into play bad things are being praised or justified because it will make my section where i belong or uh, the side that i belong to look good or maybe because the side that i belong to is the one that did bad so i have to find reasons that to justify this and not mess us up um, uh, and mess up our brand or make people look at us as bad people so you find that people now forget being as realistic as possible they forget about being humans uh, and thinking of humanity and thinking what of, of what is just and what is fair we start debating what is right and wrong or what is legal and illegal and when it comes to things like what is legal and illegal it even reaches a level where it's who who, who knows how to interpret the law in whichever way and convincingly that carries the day so it is at that time where people like me come in to start just trying to come in and speak for what is just just if something is wrong it's just wrong it doesn't matter where you belong and it is at this point where it is very hard for people like us to 
actually uh, belong wholly to a to a political ideology we try but along the way you find yourself disagreeing with the people because you feel like uh, my team now is trying to justify something that is wrong which should not be the ma the case so i i my ideology of life and politics is trying by all means to be as fair and just and as neutral as possible um, despite the fact that once in a while you can lose your stance due to personal to 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 to, to, to personal experiences or to scenarios that are happening at this but i try by, uh, a person like me tries by all means to try to speak for what is just speak for the people speak for what is going to benefit everyone not just a certain group of society but citizens and try to respect the national registration card say as long as you own this you need to benefit from the cake of the nation unlike the situation of thinking whether you have an NRC or not it's debatable to which side of politics you belong to for you to benefit from the nation yes i am contesting as a member of parliament for narikwanda constituents in western province and uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to 20 August 2021. And I think most of the time people debate their brains and what they hear. And um, I think I have tried by all means from the time I started writing music to be as um, uh, Sa say satire writing satirical as I can, I, I, I can. and uh, it's through that that people start uh, interpreting according to how their reasoning takes what I'm talking about to be so others will hear what they want to hear and some will think uh, insult but in I have I have got about uh, six albums to my to my to my name right now if we go album by album and told people to say out of these 12 songs pick the ones that you call these are an insult i doubt if the statement to say your songs are full of insult to qualify because probably maybe out of 18 songs or 16 songs it's only a song or two that you start debating to see was this parental advisory or was it okay um, there's a lot of people uh, for different reasons because we reason differently some people don't like my personality and just feel like they can't listen to my music they don't like it at all as well and then some maybe I've just never heard it some maybe they just heard one song that they didn't like and they've taken it to be uh, that's Peterson's music but I think it's always good to to probably take a listen hear what I talk about and for sure I uh, know uh, what wholeheartedly that I cannot impress everyone and not everyone uh, everyone cannot listen to my music some people are so religious that they don't listen to music they call music yam chalo secular music they only listen to gospel music uh, so with that basis i can say yes there are a lot of people that don't listen to my music <laughs> Not really. I think that question a lot of people always ask to say um, when you get into music, into po in, into power, if you are elected, are you going to retire from politics? It is more like someone. For me, music is what people know me for. It's the business that has brought me here. Music is a business. Peter Senzagaza is a brand. I am what I am today because of the music that I've made. I've made the little coin that I've made, acquired whatever I've acquired in life because of music. So for somebody to ask me if I'm going to stop music when I, if, if I'm elected in two, poly, in, in, in two office, is like asking someone who owns a supermarket or a lodge to say, so now that you are, elected into are you closing the lodge 
I mean, why would you call out the business because now you are in power? I've never heard anyone going like, um, now that I've been elected, we are closing the company, we are selling all the trucks. <laughs> I think that never happens. So I cannot close my business and my career because I have been elected to be in politics. I am what I am. I'll end up being elected because people first knew me as the businessman for music called Peter Senzagaze. You the best, the very best, my bigger boss, the way you love him, mommy. I think I am quite comfortable. I doubt if my children sleep hunger uh, like I was before when I wanted to go into school. We always want to go into school so that we make some money that can give us a job so that we start living life. But um, I got into music, like I said, it worked more than I thought and it became my source of income. But I still, apart from taking myself to school, I also took other people to school, uh, friends, non-friends, family and relatives and myself. So I think what I wanted to do with, uh, with going to, 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 to start in music, I achieved that. And now I, I have been put in a status that I need to give a service to the people, giving back to the community uh, that accepted me, supported me over the years and helped me make a little something as a musician. It's a very tricky question. Uh, but I think the first thing, uh, the first uh, thing and the first step that I've seen that keeps you in longevity in the music industry is the, the ability to not be able or try by all means make yourself not be in people's faces every time in, you know the desire that a lot of artists have is that I want to be number one every time I think that's what phases out people because you know people when they get enough of something they get used to it and it, it bores them it's like if you, no matter how much you love chicken, if you have chicken every day, you reach a time of saying, ah, I don't want this anymore. Whatever it is that you consider very nice that you'd want, even if it's UK, if you feel like going to the UK is the best thing, if you keep on going there every month, two weeks every month, you reach a time of saying, ah, think nale manavo. So, if you accept you understand that part of life as a musician i think it is it will help you a lot to be able to see others on top to be able to see others on number one uh, sometimes you're on number one others come on number one sometimes you are just away from the limelight and not really happening and you come i think it makes people always go like wow yeah he's come back again wow this is nice nice and like too much on people's face they won't look away you are just there so I think for me that has been the trick or the only really step that I've always taken to keep myself here since I came I when I came I found a lot of artists that are not there anymore and uh, whilst I was here I've seen a lot of artists come make noise and disappear I think the main cause is the desire to be on number one every time, wanting to outshine others. Um, misunderstandings will always be there. Members always say trees that are together will always uh, rub on each other. And in the industry it's like that. Sometimes you want a certain deal and the other guy wants it, you get it. He doesn't feel good or he gets it and you feel like he cheated and there's all those uh, issues that happen in the industry that you'd feel once in a while you're not in good books with someone but the only thing that I've never let happen is to let uh, a misunderstanding away from the sound get into the sound where you start even singing about each other and make it uh, the product I'll never make another human being a product that I need to sell and I try by all means to keep away from such beef that ends up in songs or in public domain best friend 
I'm not sure if that's the, last, the, the right term, but I think I have people that I believe have really made a very big difference in my career. The first person I would ever mention is Sink, DJ Sink. They call him Mark Kelvin. I think he's a guy who booked me my first, my first studio time, recorded me my first album and released my first album. So he, he made it possible for me to be where I am today. And when it comes to knowing how to live or survive in the industry, I think I give it all to Danny Kaya because I think he's taught me a lot. I always tell him to say I'm a graduate of Danny Kaya University uh, in the music industry because I think I have learned quite a lot from him uh, from afar and from uh, dialogues. I remember it very vividly. Um, it was 20 zero, 2003, 2003, 2004, 2004, there was a club called La Reference in town along Freedom Way, was it Cha 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 Road? And uh, Winston Moy and Red Linso had a show there with were Crazy. To organize, it was organized by a company called Africa. So I went there as usual to go promote my music. So I think the audience really wanted to watch uh, the crazy or red links over the show to start. There were a lot of other artists that were performing and then the guys planned that before they come on stage, I should sing before I, they come on stage, they were crazy guys. And then so the MC announced my name and people were just like, ah, we, Stifuna, we want to crazy. And then I got there, I got the microphone, and they were just like, boo, boo. They were just booing, boo. Nverani, boo. Nimbeko che kamozi, kamozi, boo. Nesofuno imba start, but inza imba che imozi, boo. And... I knew at that moment, if I walked away, it would be a very bad thing. So I really just stood there and said, guys, I'm sorry, but I just want to sing one song. Just one. It's three minutes. Three minutes of your time before a crazy come. You can even go to the band, buy food and buy drinks as I am just here for one minute. And okay, okay, okay. And the DJ play, but they're still booing. Maybe two or three accepted, but almost the whole crowd was just refusing. The DJ played the song. It was one of my first singles, Nenzina Pamela. And halfway in the song, uh, people were coming to give me money now. Uh, so it, uh, the song finished, and they were like, another one. And I said, boo! <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, I said, uh, thank you very much, and I walked away. Yeah, but they really, I was booed. I've been booed before. I know how it feels. Where people just don't want to have anything to do with you. They don't want you there. They don't want you on stage. You are trying. They are just refusing. The best advice that I've been given before was that people know me for what I am because I decided to be that. Like I decided to be a musician, that's why people know me as a musician. So to take me to decide to be something else for people to know me for that thing. But others who want me to stick to music because that's what they know me for. And they forget I am the one who decided to be a musician for them to know me for a musician. So now that I've decided to be something else, they should give it time. They will accept me for that which I've decided to be. Because at any point that I become something, it is me who's decided. Nothing has ever happened accidentally. I think uh, I try by all means. I, 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 what I've told myself is never to forget that somebody else who was not related to me did so much for me. So over a period of time, I've always been doing that as well. I think I've got about two or three artists that I've personally paid for their album copies to come out. 
uh, to, for them to have albums. Uh, I've tried to do that, and I wouldn't want to start mentioning names. Maybe one day one of them will mention, say, he did this, it is up to them. But I, I think uh, for me, that's satisfying that I know I've done and given back to what I was given. Uh, I've tried by all means to promote others, even to reach a level of where I've recorded a song and then give it to someone else to redo it so that they make it as well. And I think it satisfies me that I give back and help others be something like I was helped. Uh, the reality of life that you cannot impress everyone and you cannot annoy everyone. You cannot be loved by everyone and not everyone can hurt you. So always look for an opportunity to who loves you. Always try to read at what point you are being liked. Is it that whether at a radio station, at a promotions company, among friends, in the neighborhood, take opportunities take oppo when, when you see an opportunity of somebody liking you or having a softer a spot for you grab that opportunity and use it to excel and whenever you see someone doesn't want you around don't force it so much try by all means to keep away from such energy and keep yourself safe because it might break you down so badly a lot of people make you feel you are nothing and you cannot go anywhere if you keep them so close you might think for real you can't be anything because they say it so and so it's just a matter of being able to read situations when you are wanted utilize it when you're not wanted avoid it I think mostly what they have been accepted for, I'm, I'm not the kind of person who will try out something else very far, uh, something that's very far. I might try something else, but it's still closer to what people know me for and what they've accepted me for. So I cherish that and I make sure that I keep eyes on the ball to give people just what they want and expect out of me. I haven't yet thought of an album now. I'm just thinking of singles and uh, currently I'm just working on uh, a lot of videos. I want to go back and do a lot of videos for my old songs, songs like Msia Topinye, uh, uh, all those nice songs that people loved back in the years, uh, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, and never had a video, songs like Stoga. Um, I'm trying to work with uh, Ghetto Motion Pictures to put this, all this into uh, motion, into, vi into uh, video, so that people can have music videos for such. So yeah, it's, it's quite a slow, big project, but step by step we keep dropping videos one by one, and it's coming out quite good. I just want to say thank you very much for supporting Peter Senzagaze over the years and I still want this support. So from me and on behalf of my producer, uh, we call him the ex-boyfriend of Ghetto Motion Pictures. We just want to ask you to subscribe to this channel and share this link as much as possible because we got a lot of stuff to share with you. Umoyo wa mundu umafunika na freedom Freedom, freedom, mifunika chalo si prisoni Freedom, freedom, mifunika chalo si prisoni